Hi, I'm Suzanne McNeil with Design Originals, and I'm here at the CZT Zentangle Marketing Retreat with 20 other CZTs, and we're going to show you different things to do with your tangles. This is Cindy Shepherd's Smashbook. We're going to do tiles, do a little metal, new tangles. Oh, it was so much fun at the retreat, and we just wanted to share it with you. Hi, I'm Courtney Franz, and today I'm going to show you how to do a fall pumpkin decoration for your home. This is a picture from Better Homes and Gardens website. They're free. They have hundreds of wonderful Halloween designs. What I did was take the, pack, the picture and cut it out, tape it with painter's tape, and using a small fine point sharpie, I outlined it. Then I was able to put the pumpkin in place and outline that. And then I filled it in using a large sharpie. Now, once you've done that, you can start tangling. There are large sections and small sections on a pumpkin. And we're going to do one of the smaller sections. I take my large Sharpie, draw it, and then I begin my pattern. You can switch to your smaller Sharpie to do some of the finer lines on your pumpkin in your pattern. <laughs> Okay, here is a pumpkin that's completed. There's a nice little cat on the front. And you can see that I've used lots and lots of wonderful Zentangle patterns to complete. I like to use a different pattern in each section. Have fun tangling your fall decorations. Hello, my name is Sandhya and I'm from India and um, I, love, I love mandalas. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make a mandala. Um, we start with a stencil like this. We put it on our tile and we try to mark these corners here. Like so. And, and we make we join these dots very gently with your pencil. And then, so we're going to make our big circle here. So make sure you have your the lines of the stencil right on your pencil lines. So that way you have it. You have your center in, and then you take a smaller one, and you make sure you have your lines on the line. So, so you can make as many circles like this, um, and I have one here, right here. Make sure your pencil lines are gentle, so it'll disappear once you start tangling on. And just to get started, I'm going to show you work. So you're going to make ovals like that. Make sure uh, it's touching both the lines, the upper line and the bottom line like that. And then go in and fill in the gaps in between so 
say you do that all around and you can change your patterns in each one of this and and this is a simple way to get your mandalas And here's some that I've worked on. Hi, I'm Marianne Shebline Dawson, and I am a certified Zentangle teacher and an origami specialist. And today I'm going to show you a quick card holder that is very nice to tangle on. So uh, we begin with a sheet of 8.5 by 11 inch copy machine paper, uh, a heavier weight paper like an Astro Bright or a 24 or 26 pound paper gives you a nice sturdy um, card holder. You begin by folding the shorter ends of the rectangle together, folding the paper in half side to side, that's called a book fold. You open the book fold and fold those short ends to that center crease. That folds the paper into equal quarters. One at a time, you open up the flap or the cupboard door and fold the short end in to form a short, uh, short hem. That finishes off the edge of the paper. And then you take that short section of that cupboard door and fold it so that the edge lies right along the crease but not past the crease, making the, the crease on the top and the bottom, and closing the door. Repeat that on the opposite side, open the door, fold the hem, fold the short edge in, and close the door. The edges will no longer meet in the center, and you'll have this open section. Flipping the paper over so that the cupboard doors are at the bottom, you need to fold one of the edges only. So I'm going to take this bottom edge and make another short hem, folding that over, which creates two small triangles at each end. The bottom edge of the paper is going to fold up and the corners will go inside of the little triangle pockets that were formed. One on each side, and then very carefully folding that down, giving a good sharp crease. And when you fold it in half, you have your finished business card holder. It has a pocket in the front and in the back, and inside there are two more pockets. You can put business cards, bus passes, library cards. It's very nice for keeping receipts in your purse. Lots of things you can do with it. But it has all this wonderful blank surface, which is great for doing tangling. So I'm going to give you a quick lesson on how to draw my buttons pattern that I developed from the Zentangle pattern called Printom. And to do that, I'm going to open up the paper a little bit to give me a nice flat surface to work on. And the first thing I'll make is a very simple ribbon by drawing one straight line. That'll form the ribbon. And to make it look more like a ribbon, I'm going to add some stitching lines, just some very simple little dashes right along the edge. Try to get them evenly spaced and an even size, so they look just like stitching. And that'll give you the ribbon. Then into the ribbon we want to tuck a half of a circle. So I'm going to just draw a quick half circle, and then another circle around it called an aura. Just following the initial shape, that gives you the shape of a button. And a button has holes to sew it on, so we're going to put two little tiny button holes on there in the center. Then I can continue to add more partial circles so that they look like they're stacked up. And each time I form a circle, 
I need to add in some holes to make it look like a button. And I just keep stacking those on until I'm happy with the number of buttons that I've added. And if you want to get really crazy, you can add some little stitches to look like the button is stitched right on. That's the button pattern. Hi, I'm Billy Lauder. I'm a CZT, and I'm going to show you how to make my Tangle Folk. My Tangle Folk are, are started out as continuous line. So it's going to be a little interesting because I'm going to do this upside down, but anyway, you're going to start at the side of the head. So you come down at the side of the head and you go down and you start to make the body. You then come, go in continuous line going down, curve around, come back up, go down, curve around, come back up, the other side of the body, and now you're at the neck. You're going to come across and make an arm and go across on the other side and make an arm and finish the head. Now, I want you to think of this as the string. So the body of the folk, tangle folks are strings. So you have all this area to fill in and you're going to fill them in with tangles. So I'm going to just start out with one of my favorite ones. Just curves around. and you fill it in and then you can do a different one for the legs. You can get silly and color them in and she can wear go-go boots. Some of you may remember those. And basically I don't give them faces. So if you don't feel like you're good at face drawing don't worry about it but there's great designs you can do for hair. Add it in. And that's my Tangle Folk. Enjoy. <laughs> Hi, I'm E.J. Brown, and I love Zentangle. I have recently started making my Christmas ornaments, and I wanted to show you how they started out. I start out plain and plain white and then I use an indenti pen because it doesn't smear it stays on the ball and it has two sizes for it small one and a large one and I use both depending on the style that I'm doing and let me show you how I'm going to do one this is the way I start out You don't need to be as exact because it'll all be blended in, but I'll take the pen and do some little circles like that. And then I might go and do a squiggly. And you can pretty much use any of the Zentangle patterns that you like on it. And just let your imagination run. Thank you for looking at my Christmas ornaments. Don't tell anyone that I've done this. This is for my kids. It's supposed to be a surprise. I guess the surprise is out of the bag. This is E.J. Brown, and I look forward to seeing you at some time down the road doing a Zentangle. Thank you. Hi, I'm Carol Knight. And this is a clipboard I made to do my Zentangles on. This is a Zentangle I made. And on the back, I have some samples of other ones, so I, in case I can't think of one. Um, and I put my tile on here and clip it. And then I can turn it around as I write on it. And this is a Zentangle that I made, and I call it Mum for the chrysanthemum.
and you can use it to fill almost any space. You just continue these little squiggly lines that are kind of like the top of a heart. And it keeps a circular design, but you can also just stop when the when you get to the end of your string so it comes out a different shape. Okay. And this is another way I use to keep the different tangles so I can remember them. And there's a place for three on this side. And then this is a combination. And on this side we have two more. Hi, I'm Diane Ryan. I'd like to show you some of my tangles today that I really enjoyed doing. And I continue to find it fascinating, so I'd like to share them with you. And this was a book cover I started, and, and I used uh, both a white pen and a black pen and to add some depth and difference here. Er, and that was a lot of fun. And, and I encourage people to find books uh, and try it themselves. And this green background and is done from my master's class that I went to. Oh, and it was just a lovely opportunity to work much larger than on the tiles. And, and these are some tiles that I've done. And, and I like uh, the open space just as important as the uh, tangle tiles. And, and I'd like to express to you how much I enjoy doing shading and creating new tangles. So I'd like to show you one now and I'm going to show you here what I do it on and and I give to my students these blank uh, tile cards right? and they're blank and they're all set ready for somebody to learn how to do a tangle and if it's a large one they can go to the back and this is a tangle that I call three square or because I'll end up drawing in three squares and, and I'd like to share it with you so I'm going to bring in a nice white piece of paper here excuse me and show you how I do it and, and I've got a nice white space but I'm only gonna fill a little bit of it for you oh and I'm gonna start by by, at, by drawing a double line quite close together and then I'm going to do a larger space and then do the same type of line over until I've finished my string space. And I'm going to just do three to show you here today because I'm going to turn this and I'm going to create a square, uh, a square grid with these double lines. And you see, here's the first type of box that you end up with. And then what I end up doing before I go on is I color between the lines so that they all become just totally blank. And so if you feel like you, your lines aren't really neat, you know, this covers up a multitude of sins and don't worry about it because there's no mistakes. So I'm going to just quickly shade in one of these boxes and I need to remember to keep my pen vertical so I can get them really dark. dark. And we really need to do this slowly. Okay, but for you, I'm going to see what I can do. So I color in all the double lines and then I go back and right through the center of each square I draw another straight line and, and then I turn it and I go the other way through it. So now oh, I have these squares that have an X that have gone through it. Now 
I draw a tiny square, our second square, right here, and I color it in immediately. And I just jump over it, and I do them all at the same time, and go on. Now to finish this tangle off, I draw a line, or a box line, round the one in the middle, kind of halfway between the bigger box and the small one. And that's what I call three square. And this is a finished one up here. This is what I do with the students. And, and I use the red marker or, to show each different step. But the finished pattern ends up always in this top blank spot so that they can focus on it immediately for reference. So I'd like to thank you. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Jenny Krauskopf. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher, and I'd like to share with you the art, the mind, and the heart of Zentangle. I came into Zentangle rather through a side door. I was watching a weekly video by 10 Second Studio, and they showed how I could make patterns without using a mold. And she put up a booklet, Suzanne McNeil's Zentangle Basics, and started drawing designs. And I looked at it and thought, I could do that. I could do that. And I was one of the people who said I couldn't draw a straight line, but I found out that's not the way it works. So I'd like to share with you a little bit of one of the uh, surfaces I like to work on, which is embossing metal. With anything that you can hold in your hand, you can do Zentangle with it, whether it's a pen, whether it's a stylus. Um, I haven't found anything yet that we haven't been able to do it with. So I'm going to show you a very, very easy technique of doing this. This is an official Zentangle tangle called Ah. I'm just going to be thinking about a circle and I'm going to draw a straight line and then a circle, then a straight line and maybe fill in a little circle. I'm just going to go back and forth and turn. The nice thing about Zentangles is you can always turn your materials in any direction you like. There's not a top or a bottom. So it makes it very, very easy to work with your materials. I'm just going to add, I can add as many of these as I want. I can have it very open. I can have it very, very dense. It's just all up to what I want to do that day. And I think now I'm going to turn this over. And this is surface is painted black. And I'm going to take off with this little scrubber, I'm going to take off the part that I had been pushing in before. I can go back and I can, if I decide I want a little deeper impression, I can do that. I feel like a Zentangle is never, never has to be finished. I can always go back and play with it as much as I want to and make it just the way I happen to want it that day. So there you have a very simple design. It's easy to do, it's fun. You don't have to be able to draw a straight line. You can draw any kind of line you like. So I hope you'll come play with us. And one of the jokes we have around my classes is no surface is safe. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Judy Lehman, I'm from Houston, Texas. And I'm a CZT, a certified Zentangle teacher. I use it when I teach all those adorable children at my school. I use it in my design work, and I use it as teaching uh, private and group classes. Uh, this is a project that was a synergy project for all the CZTs around the world. They decided sometimes last November that we do a, a tribute to 11-11-11, thus 1-1-1-1-1-1, November the 11th. 2011. 
I happened to be teaching school teachers, uh, our teachers at that time, and my class was at 11 that day, so it was great. So I'm gonna show you how I've masked off these areas or resisted those areas, and it's a real simple project and process. Um, I, the first step is to mask off the long, uh, your size that you want, and I did tear that tape. The next one is to come along and use it's really important that you use drafting tape, not regular masking tape. And I haven't had a, a good luck with the blue tape, the blue painter's tape, but I use drafting tape. And I come along and just did not want them straight. One important thing is, especially when you're going to do a watercolor over it, is that you get all those little edges taped down. So, um, and you get them smooth, so nothing is going to get underneath that edge. I take very liquid watercolor um, for the first swish across here. It's just very something, very abstract. And put a little bit of a swish across and put some color on it. Doesn't matter and you just go all the way across. Now where the tape is, nothing's going to be. You're not, I'm not gonna have anything when it's all dry. There, there'll be nothing there underneath the tape. So I've got another piece that is, the watercolor has dried, I've added some patterns, and I wanna share with you a reef pattern that I have developed. And the, uh, a reef pattern starts, I'm gonna talk about little gummy worms, sort of like little worm shapes. They're abstract, no two are alike. They don't have to go in a different, the same direction. They can go in different directions. And uh, they just are scattered. They look nice when they're filled in. You can do stripes in them. You can do another squiggle line. You could stripe across the top edge. The trick about this is you have to come to a, a point as if you've gathered strings of a balloon in your hand. And so this would be the first one that I would see first in a group of them. And I draw a line down to this point. I draw from that corner to this point. That's and I stop because I want to, that one to look as if it's going behind. So wherever it touches something, that means it's going behind. <laughs> and this is, this is a vanishing point right there. As if that point's coming all the way down here. This is the... It's almost looking like at downtown New York <laughs> from a bird's eye view. So a vanishing point would come right there. This adds a lot of nice vertical lines to your patterning and to your design. You come back and fill these in. You, it, it takes a little practice to get this in and then to add shading. You either can do shading with a pencil or you can do hash marks, uh, cro sort of like cross hatching in uh, design. And you can add some lines to show that it's behind there. And if you want to put something in front of it, you can do that. One important thing about when you're painting over, you go over these tape edges, and if you'll notice right here, I've actually drawn, the trick is drawing over the tape. As you can see, the tips of that one, vertigo, has come out over. You want to imply that your design is all the way across, but that's what gives these crisp lines on the side. So when you're drawing a pattern, here it is, I've come over on the tape, and if you approach the edge of the tape, and go off the tape, it's better so you don't get your uh, pen hooked on the side of the tape. Caution, whenever you want, get ready to peel this off, even with the very best drafting tape, and if it's set a long time, you have to peel this off very carefully. This is what I call delayed gratification because you, I wanted to lift mine so quickly. Every time I'd finish an edge, and even if I've gone all the way across, I'm not sure that I'm finished. So you just have to be very careful about taking the tape off and waiting to the very, very last minute. 
because once you, you can't, it's very hard to correct one of those straight lines. So this is, you can see where that's where I've, so let me show you what, what that nice line is like here. That's how you, these lines are so straight. And you can see it's an implied line now. You can really teach implied lines when you have that masking tape. It's that where you've cut that vision off. Thanks so much. Hi, I'm Courtney France from Katy, Texas, and I decorate shirts using Zentangles. Today I'm going to show you a new pattern that I developed that I particularly like because I think it's a very feminine pattern. When you're starting out with your string and you're going to do a border, you usually already have two lines in pencil. I've drawn these a little bit darker than you'll do just because I want it to show up on camera. Once you've got those lines, I want you to draw a second border line next to each of your original lines. Then we're going to put the pencil away and go to our micron pens. You're going to start out by drawing just a little hill, looks kind of like a ladybug, and fill it in. Skip a space and continue doing that all the way down your borderline. Then you're going to come back and you're going to make an aura around your little hills. Remember your aura is not going to touch this baseline. I'm going to make my aura like that. Then, so that we can line up our other side correctly, I'm going to make a line where my aura comes to a point between my hills. I'm going to draw a line between my two borders, not touching my baseline. And I'm going to do that on each one. You can come back and make that as thick or as decorative as you like, but right now for lining up purposes, we're going to do it that way. Now that you have that line there, you know where to put your hills on this side. And then we're going to go back and do our aura just like we did on the first side. Now that we have that done, we can go into the middle and do any kind of decoration we choose. We can fatten up this line, and if you are going to fatten it up, I recommend that you round those corners just because it looks a little bit nicer. And as a final touch, you can go back up here and between your auras you can fill in and make it dark. Then you can see on my shirt how it's going to look. Have fun. I call this punch because it came after a punch that I found at a scrapbooking place. Have fun. Hi, I'm Sharon Payne. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher in North Carolina. And I just wanted to show you a little something that I've been doing with Zentangle. These are my famous boots. Um, I made these in about a week for the Zentangle certification seminar that CZTs have to take. And I use a special grid to get my design. And it's something that you have laying right around your house. It comes from your air conditioning filters. And to use the, this is the filter. It's a little piece of metal out of the filter. What I do, I use the filter as my string. And I'll take a pencil and just lightly trace the circles. And it creates this wonderful pattern that you can use for your tangles. 
And you can use as many circles as you like. And this is the design that you get later. Now, if you want to add some spikes, you can, but you don't have to. You can tangle the inside of the string, if you like, creating designs, or you can use the circles and it creates a wonderful pattern by using the circles. This way it gives you a little something to work with so that you're not always trying to recreate and you're doing something for the environment because you're recycling. And you can just do your tangles right inside. Or you can do a tangle that I created called Not Did. But it makes it very easy to create something that you didn't think you had at home. It makes a nice pattern to use. And I draw really fast, so you don't have to draw this fast. You can make your designs any way you want to do them. There's no rules and no mistakes. Now this gives you an idea of how you use it and this shows you how the grid comes out. You see the designs, the points, the circles, everything works into the patterns and it gives you a wonderful design to work with and create. Hi, I'm Estelle Goodnight and I just love doing Zendalas. Um, I have a packet pre-strung Zendalas here and it's kind of um, the pre-strung is a little bit light um, so that it doesn't show you know when you finish um, your completed Zendala and I'd like to show you just a really simple tangle um, so, let me start here. I'm first going to just outline the section that I'm doing. And I'm outlining it in black just to give it a little bit of definition. And then I'm going to use another color pen and make very, very fine lines. And I'll come back and, and go over them. And these lines are going the other ones I did over, these are going under, and I'm turning my tile as I do it because it's easier that way.
by going over it, it makes the lines look even finer and gives a little more definition to the shape. And by the way, the pen I'm using is, um, is a Micron. And I think it's the brown. Okay. Last thing I'm going to do is go over the two lines I drew originally, just to give it some dimension. I'm Cindy Shepard and I have designed the Stash and Smash book and Angie Van Gallis who did the CZT marketing retreat asked me if I could do a version of the Smash book for the Zentangle retreat. And this is, uh, I've done several of them. This one is using mostly recycled materials. I think that the envelopes, if you'll look really closely, that some of the envelopes have wonderful almost entangled patterns in them so I've utilized those in the book and aren't those just wonderful? You can also use this as a portfolio or you can use it as an inspiration book. These are different designs that have inspired me. Once you start doing Zentangle everything becomes, you know, you're so aware of patterns so this is a good way to keep track of them. You can do some of your own artwork, maybe have it photocopied and put it in your book to use as a portfolio. And sometimes on the envelopes, I, this one was a barcode, so I was able to just continue that barcode and do some Zentangle on that. Add just little pieces of scrap paper. That's what a smash book is all about. Use your odds and ends, your bits and pieces. I love the tape, duct tape, paint. This one is done with ink, ink tense pencils. Use your punches to make little frames for it. Uh, do a magnified Zentangle pattern. And this is my other book. This one is using cardstock and tissue paper. And this one is all done in black, red, and white. This is, a, again, a good way to exhibit some of your ATC cards or some of the tiles that you'll be doing as a Zentangle enthusiast. This was an envelope that I'd gotten. Uh, again, be aware of all your junk mail that you receive. Crossword puzzle, great way to have little mini tiles. Use stamps, use stencils. Just look through everything you have for inspiration. Make little pockets. Some more tiles. There's some of my friends zentangling on a floor cloth. This is going to be so beautiful. And once I add the epoxy finish, then it'll be a permanent fixture that we can use on the floor. This tangle's going to be beautiful. We're going to have a whole collection of different patterns all on the one cloth. It's almost midnight and we're still working on Is the beautiful it? floor cloth. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're trying to get it finished, adding different tangles all over it. Too much fun, absolutely. Van Gallis. I hope you really enjoyed all these wonderful projects that these CZTs did. They've been hard at work for three days and you can go to Zentangle.com and go into the Learn tab and find CZT, uh, find a CZT in your area at Zentangle.com.